North Korea is threatening to cancel its summit with the United States. But it doesn't look like we're taking them seriously. North Korea is starting to saber rattle again. Kim Jong-un is saying that he might cancel the summit with the United States next month if we continue joint military exercises with South Korea. He's also saying via a spokesman that if we keep demanding he denuclearize, which was the whole reason he agreed to the summit in the first place, as did we, <laughs> that he might cancel it as well. Uh, North Korea's, this is from a Newsmax story, North Korea's first vice foreign minister, Kim kai Gwan said the regime was disappointed by provocative comments from the United States. According to a statement published Wednesday, Wednesday by the state-run Korean Central News Agency. Here's what they said. Uh, what's this guy's name again? Kim kai Gwan said, quote, if the Trump administration comes to the summit with a sincere intent to improve DPRK, Democratic People's Republic of Korea, U.S. relations, then it will deserve a good response. But... If it forces us into a corner by pushing for the abandonment of our nukes only in a one-sided demand, then we won't have an interest in such talks anymore, and we will consider whether to respond to an upcoming summit. Well, that doesn't make much sense. That seems to me to just be uh, posturing for the North Korean people. In other words, we've already said to North Korea, if you denuclearize, we'll help you feed your people. We'll help you expand your economy. We'll bring in trade partners, industrial partners like South uh, Korea, clearly, and Japan. And now Japan is, is a major trading partner in the region. Japan's D, uh, GDP is approaching $5 trillion. It's three times greater that of Russia. Uh, so this means a sea change. It's a whole new world, literally, in many respects, for North Korea. The statement added from Kim kai Gwan: if Donald Trump that Donald Trump would remain as a failed president, quote unquote, failed president, if he follows in the footsteps of his predecessors. Now, earlier uh, this morning, North Korea time, today, Wednesday, says North Korea abruptly canceled talks with South Korea and warned the U.S. to, quote unquote, think twice about a Trump summit with North Korean leader, leader Kim Jong-un scheduled in Singapore. They're, uh, they're just trying to save face with their own people. Now, the State Department doesn't seem to care. State Department said, quote, we have not heard anything from that government, meaning North Korea, or the government of South Korea to indicate we would not continue conducting these exercises or would not continue planning for our meeting between President Trump and Kim Jong-un next month. That's from State Department spokesman, spokesperson Heather Nauer. <clears throat> South Korea's uh, Yonhap news agency reported yesterday that Pyongyang had canceled high-level talks uh, because of the, what they call the Max Thunder military exercises between the U.S. and South Korea. Now, these exercises are planned long, long in advance. This isn't something that, uh, you know, popped up and what was a slight on North Korea. You don't just move ships and troops into a region in a week, okay? These were planned years in advance, and we should undergo them because North Korea is not the only threat in the region. We shouldn't not conduct our joint military exercises with South Korea, a vital strategic and economic partner. So that's what's going to make North Korea leave the table. Good riddance. Uh, the South Korean uh, outlet Yonhap uh, said, quote, uh, well, we read about this uh, a little bit earlier, but this is from the North Korean news agency, quote, the U.S. will have to undertake careful deliberations about the fate of the planned North Korea U.S. summit in light of this provocative military ruckus, the ruckus, the ruckus, just a bunch of, a bunch of hooligans out there making a ruckus in the South China Sea. I mean, it's like, I don't know, who writes this stuff for North Korea? Is it 1952? Now, the, uh, these drills have been going on for a long time. And what they really are, they're a uh, training exercise in the event North Korea invades South Korea. And if there were ever a time to conduct this drill, not to cease conducting it, to conduct this drill is now. To show North Korea that we're using the Reagan doctrine of trust but verify. That this is about peace through strength. This is about peace through a guarantee that the might and weight of the United States military will destroy you if you cross us. And, and we've, uh, you know, the United States as a nation 
despite what the liberals want you to believe. They want you to believe China is more powerful and Russia is more powerful. China's GDP is, uh, GDP is almost half that of ours. It's about 10 to 11 trillion hours is 17 to 18 trillion dollars. Russia's is $1.5 trillion. Our GDP is more than 10 times greater than Russia's. So do your own research because the left and the left-wing media loves to fear monger. They loved when Obama made it seem like the United States was weak and the United States needed to be a doormat and an appeaser and capitulate, but we don't. We're economically the strongest nation in the history of the world. We will continue to be that GDP will grow as our oil and oil and natural gas exploration and production rise, peaking in 2023. Russia's will continue to fall. I'm going to be talking on my other show today about new satellite imagery that indicates Russia and China are actually lying about their respective GDPs. And so the uh, now the State Department responded to this North Korean statement and said, quote, there, these military exercises are certainly not provocative. Kim Jong-un has said he understands the importance to the United States that we conduct these joint exercises. They continue to go on. And I love the Pompeo State Department. I really, really do. Because the Tillerson State Department would have insulted Trump. The John Kerry State Department would have begged North Korea for forgiveness and told them we were going to dry dock our ships. And the Hillary Clinton State Department would have been absent for comment because Hillary would have been out there looking for her next payoff. But the Pompeo State Department says... Hey, Kim told us something else. We don't care about his internal propaganda. The exercises are going on with our friend South Korea. And if Kim doesn't like it, too bad. And he better, he better get to the summit, whether he likes it or not. And this is exactly the way you have to handle bad guys in the world. I predict this team, this foreign policy team of Donald Trump, Mike Pompeo, and John Bolton will be delivering great winning results for years to come. This is all really important content. I want to bring it to you every day. So subscribe to our premium service at www.therebel.media forward slash shows. Go to the app store, download the Rebel app and go to firescottisrael.com and sign our petition to have Broward County Sheriff Scott Israel removed from office. As always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.